This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGROUP to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hey, what about that Legends of the Arrowverse? What about that? <laughs> there. That is, there's your freaking polished little hellfire. Welcome to the second episode of Legends of the Arrowverse, since Gotham decided to take yet another break. I am Phil, and as I said, joining me is... Hey y'all, it's Little Hellfire. What is Gotham without unnecessary arbitrary breaks? Even in the final season, you gotta have it. <laughs> I know. I mean, Arrowverse takes un- unnecessary breaks, too, so, you know. Well, I mean, Gotham took this week off, and they're back next week, and then they take, they're take taking a break, like a month break, before the last two episodes. Hopefully so, they have a good marketing plan, I don't know. The last couple episodes, they probably don't care. Because I know, like, um, Empire and Star, which are shows that I watch on Fox, they take, like, literally they've been off since Thanksgiving, I think it is. Well, again, that's... Think- Back last week, and I was like, "Oh, well, this week," and I was like, "Oh, they're back!" Yikes! <laughs> Again, that's another Fox show, so I guess that's like the Fox. Uh, that's what thing. happens when you um when you don't know how to make a damn schedule. But <laughs> Disney will fix it. Don't worry about it. Disney will fix it. That's right. The deal goes through officially March twentieth, and then on March twenty first, we're going to hear about our new X Men franchise and our Fantastic Four franchise because they can't. They're legally not allowed to talk about it before then. So. Expect big announcements on March 21st. It's going to be all the gifted. <laughs> oh, no, that's canceled. You know that, right? Why? Disney. The ratings are terrible. I don't know if they switch it up since it's, you know. It's yeah, they month. haven't it's... been renewed as far as I know. Oh. It was, yes, and the ratings are terrible, so I'm expecting that to be canceled. I can say Marvel's a Disney property. But anyway, we're not here to discuss that. We're here to discuss Arrowverse. <laughs> oh. <gasps> oh, man. I, like, ever since, the, like, I feel like they made the announcement about season eight way too soon. I, everybody I know that is into Arrow, except for, like, you, Philip, is, like, totally checking out of Arrow. Because, more than likely, the going theory is he actually is going to die in Crisis on Infinite Earths now. And, uh, I just yeah. wonder, I just keep wondering if he's going to die. Yes, because, you know, for those of you li- living under a rock, uh, Stephen Amell announced that Arrow season eight will be ten episodes and the last season, but um, everyone's calling he's going to die in crisis. So I'm wondering if they're going to pull like in, you know, if, they, if if they drop that during this this last crossover as a red herring because everyone's like, oh, he's going to die now. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think that they will kill him though because Arrowverse started it all. It'd be really rude and disrespectful, and you know. Emil didn't say he wouldn't come back for cameos. I mean, that's the best of both worlds. You know, you do a barrel yeah. where you can just show up on any show now. That's what I was going to do other things, too. That's what I was going to say. Are they, are they going to just, like, end it where it's like, you know, he's still the green arrow or something? And or maybe that. he fakes his death or they erase the fact that the public knows that he's green arrow. I mean, there's so many possibilities that they can go. It just ha- literally in this day and age, though, your ending has to be satisfying for streaming yeah. and syndication values. So it's like, okay. It's but been this- an improvement. I'm, I'm going to say that season seven has been a, a great improvement over season six. Mm-hmm. But it's still kind of boring, and episodes like this make every season, season, the B side of the season, always feels like it's spinning its wheels until at least episode 18. Every single season of Arrow has always been like that. Well, I just, well, I wonder how, if we're gonna, uh, the pacing will probably be a lot better next season than it's only 10 episodes. I don't know. Remember what happened with Defenders? It took them, what, mm. three episodes to get the damn team actually assembled, so who knows? Who freaking knows? Yeah, but again, it's the eighth season of Arrow. I mean, we kind of know where we're going, and they know what the... I'm sure... You I know. don't trust these writers. Like, as much as I say it's been a great improvement, it's still a cluster frack in the whole Arrowverse writing development situation, period. You look across all these shows, and every single show is spinning its wheels. It's been spinning its wheels since at least episode seven. Flash is obviously the most biggest offender with this whole reverse Flash business. Mm-hmm. So, I, I can only hope for the best, but I'm prepared for the worst at this point. And that, that's just how you have to be with Arrowverse. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. I'm a, I'm assuming he's either going to die in Crisis, and then maybe I wonder if we'll get if they do that at like episode nine as usual. Maybe like we'll get a tenth episode that's like his funeral or whatever. But yeah, that's what everybody's speculating. But I'm just like, I don't think they would do that. You can't end a series on no. a funeral. Well, they could have, you know, him in flashbacks and stuff, and I don't know. Or you do the funeral, and then at the last second you reveal that he's not dead, he faked his death or something. You just see freaking the specter picking up his soul from hell, <laughs> or something like that. Um, But no, this does free up the budget, and I keep hearing about season two of Constantine, and mm. I, I won't believe it until I see it. Like, yeah. I, I just won't, because all the people that I love from that show are busy doing other things. Juli- well, Juliana Harkovic can come back as that damn angel now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Nice I don't know. Thing. Are they going to spin these characters off into, like, Legends, Supergirl, Flash? I really feel like there was a time and place where I was hoping that they would put Felicity in Star Labs, but now that Wes Allen is actually official, they're married, they have a kid from the future, I just don't feel like that's a good idea. Yeah, but if Carlos leaves the Flash, are they going to need somebody over there? And I heard that um, Tom Cavanaugh won't be returning as well as either next season. Yeah, there's oh. huge shakeups going on over at the CW. I don't know if this is like AT and T Warner Brothers like merges and they're like, you know, these 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 people are like, you know, I don't know their contracts or something. Like it's just really yeah. weird that all these big shakeups are happening at this particular moment. So, well, if that's the case, yeah. then there would be room for like, say, a Felicity on the Flash, but like. Well, or too bad Curtis left. I mean, they could have yeah. stuck it out for a couple more episodes for Curtis. Like, it's so, it's so weird. I mean, it's like, um, I don't think that it was Stephen and those decision at all. I think they started really looking at the budget. AT&T did, and they're just trimming the fat at this point. Maybe, yeah. The ratings have been in a constant state of free fall every single season. And if we're going to be honest, Arrow peaked in season two. Fight me. Fight me. Fight me, nerd. Statistical evidence doesn't lie, bro. This is not anecdotal. My cousin's friend told me this. No, the numbers are there. Square in the face on a spreadsheet. So, <clears throat> hopefully they can make the best of it. But Training Day was so such a weird episode. It, it reminded me of the gun control episode where they have this, this, this big plot point with two sides and nobody can be right or wrong about it because it's this issue that in real life that you can't really solve. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Law and order or vigilante justice. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, I know. And then, you know, the whole Mia thing. Oh, because Mia, Mia is short How the what? hell do you get that from Moira? I don't think that's how that works. Irish people, help me out. That's not how this works. I don't know how any of this works. Well, that's what I've been saying about Arrow for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how time travel works. <laughs> but, I mean, do you think that... Is is the is the flash forwards? Are they gonna look? Twist? Becca said that they're actually gonna continue in their canon, but I'm like, well, with Crisis on Infinite Earths, that doesn't make sense. I do feel like they might. There's their out, but they didn't take the out with Flashpoint either. So I don't know about these people. I think I think Crisis is gonna give them an excuse to fold in Supergirl if that show survives and Black Lightning. Well, yeah, Black Knight. I know they didn't want to in the beginning, but they're going to have to, Black Lightning. Yeah, especially with Arrow gone and they still want a grounded show. I don't think that Batwoman is going to be grounded because they do want to bring in some of the more fantastical... uh, Like, Batwoman actually has kind of a fantastical element to her robes, not to mention Poison Ivy with her weird magic, science, Mm. pseudoscience crap, and, you know, all this other stuff. So, I don't know. Or are we getting a Superman show in the place of Supergirl? That's the other rumor. That would be well, no, like like I said, I am like I love Tyler H. I do like I'm a huge Teen Wolf and um, Seventh Heaven fan. I've known the kid forever, um, like through the TV. But he is not a good Superman, and he cannot. He is no Dean Kane. He can, he's no Tom Welling. He can't lead a Superman show that will be successful and last long. It will be a one season show. Mark my words, if they did that, especially if they canceled Supergirl for that. Do you know how many such how 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 upset that would make people? Yeah, so are you saying the more successful route would be to keep going with Supergirl rather than go with the Super? Wrap it up. Get her to 100 episodes and wrap that crap up. I'm sorry. Like, they have gone so far over the edge with Supergirl. Like, I don't even recognize that show. I don't recognize that character. Like, that's, I don't know, just not my Supergirl, I guess. I've always said that Supergirl is basically just Felicity with superpowers. Mm Mm-hmm. 
from day one. And now that's literally what the show is. And I've, I've been trying and they've had some interesting concepts. I love the Lex, the, L- the Luther family. I don't like John Cryer as Lex Luther. I freaking hate it. I thought it was terrible. Wait, he, it hasn't come on yet. Maybe not for you. Oh, <laughs> maybe not for you. <laughs> oh, so, all right. Then this future, future site. So, uh, so, <laughs> So Cryer's not a good, not a good, not a good Lex. Stick with Lenny. Well, I put it to you this way: like I know there's going to be some people that like it, but John Cryer just is just mm, like even, like I don't know. Like John Shay, I thought was an odd choice for a Lex Luthor, but he worked out. And I was like, okay, maybe I could see it, kind of, sort of. But this is definitely like Batman versus Superman movie levels of. Not my Lex Luthor. I wouldn't say. I haven't seen the episode yet, but I, just from what I've seen, I would say it's not that bad. I mean, I can agree with you with the, you know, not as good as John Che and stuff, but uh, no, don't, don't cast him with uh, Kitty Luther. No, yeah. I mean, I don't even know why. Like, Lena is the better, is the superior Luther. That's who we should be focused on. I don't give a crap about Lex Luthor and the Supergirl world. Like, it makes no sense to care about Lex. Is it just. Like, it, they just they pull that out of their butt for ratings. I was going to say, ratings grab. Yeah, I mean, but honestly, they should have brought back the dude, you know, from season one. Oh, uh, Max Lord. Peter, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, that, that, for me, that's a better Supergirl fit than trying to, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, and you get, it's like a thing for, you know, people been watching from day one, be like, hey, look, we're going to tie up some of this stuff from uh, season one we never addressed again. It was so much, right? And it's just like, Lucy Lane, let's be Lucy real. Lane Max Lore, General Lane, I mean. Let's be real. Like, ever since Andrew Kessler got fired, a lot of Flash and Supergirl have been in free fall. Those writers are just, they just don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. I, as much as I don't like the guy for what he did, he was kind of the glue that was holding the, 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 the shows that we were like, oh, that are better than Arrow, supposedly. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's rough. It's rough being an Arrowverse fan right now. I mean, maybe that's the formula for success, like the Marvel movies. It's like you need like one. There is a formula. <laughs> you need, well, you need one one guy or one person at the head of this, you know, steering the ship. I mean, a Greg is a good writer. Mark is a good writer, too. He's just not a good showrunner. He can't be in charge. He cannot have unchecked power. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite episodes have been written by Mark Guggenheim, but when he was a showrunner, it was just, it was too much fanfic, Mm -hmm. too fan, you know, uh, patients running the asylum kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but like, no, it's just, I don't know. They just lost their vision. Flash was definitely... Well, they had a vision, and now, like, their whole feminist thing is just way, really way too over the top and very off putting for the casual fan, is what mm-hmm. the general across the internet has been, and I can totally understand that. Well, did, um, all right, well, let's, let's jump into some specific episodes. Where do you want to, do you want to go in order, or where do you, where do you want to hit first? Yeah, you can go in order if you want. All right, um, well, then I guess we'll start with Supergirl. <laughs> I honestly like I haven't liked the season at all and this episode is like encapsulates everything I hate about Supergirl this season. Last is, it, two is, seasons, it, honest. is it too political? Too political. Some people especially for a CW show, like that's not what people watch the CW for. It's 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 superhero escapism. Like you should know your role. Like I've always said if you wanted to have a social justice warrior character, it should have been Green Arrow. That is your natural place for that within this world. But they didn't want yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the place. Shouldn't this show with like maybe the Flash, but even more so with Supergirl, should it be more lighthearted? Should it be more hopeful? It should be it should be hopeful. It should be total slice of life Americana, like because we there's no show on TV like that in Yeah, it, I mean Yeah. Yeah, no. So, I mean Supergirl seems it's it's, more, it's more like depressing than like anything else this season. It, it, yeah, it's way too close to home. Yeah. It's a reason why Game of Thrones is the number one TV show. (laughs) It's historic, you know, it's kind of like loosely, thinly veiled historical references that happened like hundreds and hundreds of years ago wrapped in a fantasy. Like, take a hint. Westworld, robots, or AI, or whatever the hell that TV show's about, you know, in cowboy hats. Cool. You know, (laughs) like... 
we don't need, you know, all these allegories to, you know, immigration and Trump. Like, God, everybody's obsessed with Trump. Let it go. And it's like we keep Do like South Park. Let it go. <laughs> and, and we keep coming back to Agent Liberty, which is fine. But when are we getting Red Daughter? I think they totally dropped that plot point. Like, are they are they saving that for? I like, think because of Russia, like actual things with Russia right now, maybe they actually did drop it, or they had to retool it, or well, something. Every, every couple see every couple episodes, you get like a quick flash of it. Um, what was it like an episode or two back? I thought they got something like she got sick or something but maybe so it's just, for next season that's what i'm wondering are they gonna do, they use that as like the cliffhanger for this season and then you know but that was the cliffhanger for last season yeah but is she gonna come face to face with the quote-unquote clone at the season finale or whatever because oh. I'd, ra- I'd rather see that as like it. i'd rather see that as the cliffhanger than like you know something with agent Red liberty or Supergirl, something. let's do it mm. oh yeah what if they're both the real Supergirl? girl just got split in half that's what that's what i thought the device did Honestly, and like they weren't really clear about it. <laughs> the little crystal from yeah. the last season. Yeah, I, was, I I don't know if that if it split her or if it just like cloned her and it's like you know like a different version of Bizarro or situation. Because we what? already did Bizarro. Yeah, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, red, blue, Supergirl. That's what they should do. But it's like if they split her, then do it already. <laughs> Address it already. Can we get some gold kryptonite or something like? We just don't have fun with Supergirl. Like, I, like I'm gonna tell you, I'm the biggest critic and lover of Smallville, and they knew when to have fun and they knew when to be serious, and it just, they just knew the balance for the ensemble cast. I really feel like Supergirl's fading into her own show, like in the to the background, honestly. Hmm. Like everybody loves Brainy now. Hmm. Yeah. And, and, and you know her sister, I like Alex too, and. You know, I thought that her um, coming of age, coming out story took a little too long, personally. Yeah. But yeah, this episode was just, it encapsulates everything that I don't like about the season. <laughs> it's like a microcosm of everything that's wrong with Supergirl. I know. I know. All right, I have to check something real quick. Uh, why don't you tell people, I don't know, without without spoiling it too much, what you thought of the Lex Luthor stuff. No, no, I will wait. But like I said, the performance of John... Go ahead, check on it. I'll talk right. about it. Right. <clears throat> and don't forget to edit this. <clears throat> anyway, so John Cryer as Lex Luthor is just... You know, it's almost like Kevin Spacey's Lex Luthor, now that I think about it, from um, Superman Returns. It's just, they had a good idea, but the actual execution of it, it just is lackluster and fell flat for me. So, I don't know. People that kind of maybe like that Kevin Spacey, Gene Hackman kind of likes Luther, they might like it. But if you're like a diehard Michael Rosenbaum Lex Luther or a John Shea Lex Luther lover, then you're not going to like it for sure. Yeah, but the rest of the episode is pretty good leading up to the circumstances of <clears throat> this familial conflict that's kind of like the center of the episode or whatever. It's just John Cryer's performance. It's just so unbelievably laughable to me. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll talk about it when the episode happens. But yeah, as far as I'm concerned, John Cryer has no business. No business being Lex Luthor. And I swear the only reason why he got the role is because he has a contract with CBS. And CBS is, you know, partners with the CW. And they force their character contracts. Look at Michael, poor Michael Emerson. Oh, well, and, and he, is a no, he is a no name, too. I, I mean, if you can't get famous, you might as well get infamous, I guess. <laughs> I mean, in this day and age, infamy is almost better than fame. Like, I was just having this conversation not too long ago. Well, that's like it's a, that's that old thing. It's like is is any is is there any bad fame? You know. Well, have you ever have you ever watched actual Two and a Half Men? I've seen yeah. probably like eleven to thirteen episodes from mm-hmm. like across all the seasons, including the Asher Kutcher ones. Because yeah, it used to come on before like before the Arrowverse back in the day, and then it was Mike and Molly, and then it was Two Bro Girls, but. This, if you ever saw the episode where Alan turns evil, where he's basically scamming his family, mm-hmm. that's him as Lex Luthor. Oh, really? That, that, hmm. So I just mm, wasn't so, perfect. So it's basically Alan Harper with a beard. Yeah, yeah, you know, Mirror Universe. <laughs> Jesus. 
I said no, but I said if you like like a Gene Hackman, Kevin Spacey, Lex Luthor, then you might actually like John Cryer's Lex Luthor. But yeah. I'm Smallville, like that is my my definitive Superman. So uh, Michael Rosenbaum is just my everything, and that's who I stack everybody up against. And mm. he is at the bottom of the totem pole. Mm. <laughs> I mean, he's underneath Batman v Superman Lex <gasps> for me, because we all know that was Lex Junior. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't real Lex. <laughs> Clone body. <laughs> so, you could, know. Could they redeem that if they went the comic route and say, oh, yeah, that's old Lex in a clone body? And it made him a little crazy? Yeah, yes! Absolutely. absolutely. But, uh-huh. you know, that, that whole universe is dead. You know, it died with Aquaman, and Shazam is the new guard. So, you yeah. know, thank er- God. Everything's so disconnected. The DCU is dead, and I am so happy. Mm-hmm. We can start over. We can build some hope and have some fun again, because DCEU needs it. Yeah. Aquaman was a good start. We got to keep the trend. Hmm. So anyway, yeah. But what did you think about this week's episode of Supergirl? Uh, Again, um, I'm kind of like, I'm with you. It's just like, it's it's the the whole season. Okay. I I don't know if you, I probably didn't mention this when I stepped away. Um, how, How do you feel about the Alex mind wipe? Oh, I feel like that's such a cheat. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? That's because he's worried about her identity, and it's just. But why I would know. you? Know. But if you, but if you love he your came this far. It's not fair. It's not right. It'll be undone by the end of the season, though, right? You really? I, I'm assuming, yeah, because I was gonna like, would they keep? Would she keep her in the dark? But I, I guarantee you, they won't bring it back. But even though it was like kind of Alex's idea, is she gonna resent Kara for doing it though? I feel like it is about time for them to have another wedge in their relationship. Things have been going a little too good for the sisters. Or if she can't bring the uh, her all of her memories back and she has to like reveal herself again, is Alex going to be all mad because she doesn't remember that she, she was in on it? I don't know. It's, it's tough to say because they had, like, I remember the first season. Alex was a real hard sell and a real hard pill for a lot of the fans to swallow, which is why I think they gave her the coming out story mm-hmm. to kind of like soften her edges. And um, the actress is really great, and she 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 does great work with the limited script that they give her. So mm-hmm. I don't know that they would necessarily want to erase all that goodwill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I didn't like it. I didn't think it was fair. I didn't think it was right. I, I thought it was a cheap shortcut. Either you trust somebody or you don't. Either yeah. they're family or they're not. Yeah, it just it just seemed like convenient writing that like you know they couldn't change what's her faces and uh the general's uh, mind, but they, you know, they can w- wipe Alex's memories. Yeah. You know, I just really miss Hank. Like, in a, like he's just, his reduced role has just been such a bummer this, this season. And oh, I, I guess it's for oh, CGI yeah. reasons, budget reason, and everything. Mm-hmm. That's probably why we have the villain that we have. It's, it's a mask at the end of the day. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, well, speaking of villains, what do you think of Manchester Black and the uh, Elite? I thought that uh, Manchester Black was a little... He's been a little too on the nose. Like um, his, his last name's Black. Well, no, just the whole yeah. thing that they did with him. It's just like... I don't, I can use a little more comic book accuracy for Supergirl. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. It just see, he just seems like another villain almost. Just, yeah. Yeah, he's he's been kind of in the background, even though supposedly he was billed at the beginning of the season as, like, the thing that we should be, you know, watching mm-hmm. out for. Yeah, he just seems like another Supergirl <laughs> villain. It's just like, yeah, we, like you said, comic book accuracy, make him like that hard-edged anti-hero. Yeah. And what, do you, and, um, what about Nia? I don't want anybody adding me, so I'm not going to comment on it. Adding me? <laughs> what? Don't at me on Twitter, because uh-huh. I, I don't like the character. Like, okay, that's great that, you know, inspirational actress or whatever. I mean, we have Laverne Cox. It's not like it's the first time. I'm just saying. <laughs> but whatever. Like, I just, I don't like the character. I don't. I think that it's too, con- like, it contradicts everything about that race of aliens and stuff. It's just, it's weird. I just, I I don't think they're, I don't think they've, they're writing for her good this season. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, it's not the actress, it's what they're giving her that I don't think. Yeah, it's just... Stop shoehorning stuff. I, I don't know. Like it just feels like an echo chamber. It feels like they're stuck on Tumblr. And and I understand what they're what they're trying to do, but it's like 
while Kara is trying to preserve her identity, she wipes her own sister's memory, but then she tells Nia her identity. Yeah. Again. Yeah, she's been she's been seeing herself in in this character too much. Mm-hmm. Like from day one that we meet this character, she's like, "You're me," and I'm like, "No, no, sweetie, no." She and, wishes. And, I mean, and she, she tells Jay. Like, just the way that the character has been written in her interactions with some of my favorite characters has made her person non grata with me. Just period. Well, it's just... Is is that intentional, though? Is like, Kara sees herself in Nia, but meanwhile, Nia's, like, all confused and looking for a direction. It's like, well, maybe Kara needs a turn. <laughs> When's the last Which time Kara... weird, because she, she... At the end of last season, she did have this definitive come yeah. to... Come to um Argo moment, if you will. <laughs> yeah. It's like, when's the last time she wrote a story? She's busy. Fine. I mean, at least she's not being unethical like her cousin Clark writing stories about himself. <laughs> I'm sure Shout out to Charlie that. Esther for that one. Or Spider-Man. Hey, I fought the Sandman. King of the selfies. Mm-hmm. I heard that somewhere. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, let's let's move on. Let's talk about Flash. Okay. The Flash failure is an orphan. I I love that saying. Actually, it's one of my favorite sayings, but um this season, this whole season must be either an orphan or an abortion. I'm not sure which. Well, I mean, I hate Dawn. There, I said it. <laughs> I hate her. You I said freaking that. hate her. You said that. I hate her like most people hate Iris West, okay? <laughs> You said Dawn. Oh, shit. (gasps) How drunk are you? Nora. (laughs) Thank you. It's who she's supposed to be at the end of the season. It's going to get retconned back that they're actually twins. Dawn and Dawn. Mark my words. She's getting erased from this timeline, son. We're going back to things the way they're supposed to be. Either way, if Stephen Amell dies or not, does, does Nora take Barry's place in the crisis? Wally comes back, bro. We're killing off Black Wally. (laughs) <laughs> Why? He's gone anyway. Well, he hasn't been back, been, been back for his other two episodes, so... Um, uh, does he have two this season? I'm going to lie because a Flash has to die in a, in a crisis. It, it, it's tradition. Well, that's what I'm saying. Nora came back to... Well, to I, that's what she says to save her father. I wonder if she takes his place. Ugh. It's going to be... A, a, I'm, th- I'm telling you, it's going to be a whole time thing where it's like, yeah, she's going to sacrifice her her life to save berries, but then meanwhile, she hasn't been born yet, so it's like, okay, so once she's born, we have to keep an eye on her and make sure, she, you know, we have yeah, time to change... once she's born, her egg splits and turns into a... And then that egg gets fertilized with a different kind of sperm, and we've got Dawn and Dawn! Nah. Okay? Yes. Well, yeah, then an Eobard okay. says... Didn't, We're getting you, tornado twin son. We're in episode getting, 100, did a Neo Bard say, is this Dawn? And then he's like, I don't know. Yeah. Nora is annoying. And not just because you can never really see freaking Flash and that damn Cruise Lantern together. Like, just the whole thought of Nora has been so irritating. And her execution, she acts like she acts like she's William's age from present day. Like, and she's supposed to be damn near 30. Like, what the hell? Is the character supposed to be? Yeah, she's supposed to be like in her mid to late twenties. That's what you do the math. That's what I thought, but I'm like, like six year old. Most episodes, I'm like, she acts acts like a teenager. She is like really naive, and from the future that she's from, how can you be that naive? No matter how bad your mother shelters you, I mean, especially with the social media, and she's like a genius. (laughs) Shway. (sighs) Crash. Uh, and underwhelmed, not whelmed. I wish that I could be whelmed for one episode of The Flash this season. But I mean, I mean, do do they have to play her kind of naive so Eobard can take advantage of her? You know, I just say she fell in love with them and they're getting an end. Love makes you stupid, and now, that would have solved it. I think I know, but I think she she's convinced that he's going to help her save and her father. And then kind of slowly reveal. I'm just saying that would have been a better way to do it. Love makes you it, stupid. Look at Barry and Iris. Eobard's trying to change that timeline. He has her convinced that she's going to save Barry, but meanwhile, that clock's ticking down, which you know what that clock's probably going to be. It's either... It's execution, it's, I was hoping. <laughs> that or the that or the Medicure. Yeah. Either way, he's he's trying to avoid it. He's trying to alter that timeline. But he's not a meta, though, really. Where's his powers come from, bro? I 
always feel like he siphoned it. It's like it's a thing about this way that they play this particular version of Reverse Flash. I don't know. Anything's possible because the writers are idiots and don't read comics. <laughs> the, serpent, the serpent's eating its own tail. Oh yes, it is an Ouroboros. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I mean, the whole story of the Flash becoming the lightning that struck itself. Literally, it is. Yeah, but uh, that's out now that we have Speed Force. Well, they can still work it in. That's Especially, true. you know, I mean, I feel like it's a reason why they went ahead and did West Allen. Just saying, not for nothing. Hmm. Because, you know, as much as I'm a diehard West Allen fan, I do not dig their chemistry. It's not believable, but I'm glad we stuck with West Allen, because Elasti is an atrocity. <laughs> There's a hashtag for you, Twitter. Stick that up there with hashtag feminism. Anyway, no, but this, this episode wasn't that bad. Like, we've all been like, oh, it's Grace. We finally got to that whole thing. So I'm just like, finally, everybody stopped being an idiot. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, we, is it next episode, the preview where they see the time ship? Cause the time bubble, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had been, yeah. Yeah. I had to binge like two episodes of Arrow and two episodes of Flash, and then yeah. some other stuff happened where I'm like, my episodes are mixed up. So, so, so is that how Grace came from the f- future in the time bubble? Plot twist is really evil, Barth. <laughs> Chris oh, Klein. Great. Chris Klein, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm ready for a change, but I don't know. This this whole thing is stupid. Cicada has been a bummer. Well, at least we at least we know why we got those couple episodes where you know, like the Ralph and Barry episode where they weren't using powers. Why why we didn't get a lot of like powers like in a few episodes because we got that big Grodd and King Shark, King Shark episode yeah. CGI fight. Yeah, yeah, which was worth it. I oh. I was kind of mad about that episode too, though. Why? Like, it seemed like everybody was gung ho about like just shoving the cure in everybody like villains and now we're asking them politely like it's just a weird thing well no that was the plan all along and then barry you know he's like oh he's gonna you know king shark was gonna kill you cisco and uh, and i'm like didn't they say king shark you know his as he became as he was king the longer he was king shark the more his mind was kind you know yeah more bestial and stuff so i don't think king shark could have given consent I don't know, but they don't know much about sharks. That's all I'm saying. They should have done a little better research on sharks. But he's a shark, half shark, half man. I know, but he was more. He's more shark than man, unlike BoJack Horseman, where we don't know if he's more horse or more man. He's but more like, shark. But yeah, like I was telling Charlie on Super Connectivity, they had the uh, Ben Grimm King Shark. It's like, oh, I have to go back. You know, I'm the only one who can stop uh, Gorilla Grodd. Yeah. That was that was a weird episode, but this mm-hmm. one was even kind of weirder. Like I'm just, they need to leave the time travel shenanigans alone. It gives me a headache, and they never get it right. They need to give it a break. I mean, what's well, like every season now? Are we going to be like, okay, the mistake we made last season created new meta humans where we have to fight? And meta tech. Let's not forget all that meta tech that's still laying around. Can we just go out and fight <laughs> bad guys? You do. You do. They can go. They can want to go out and and fight metahumans, even if they didn't create them. And I'm more interested in meta- particle accelerator. We've had <laughs> one instance at least. Yeah. So I don't know, and you know the thing like with Caitlyn, and th- there's other, just like in the DC universe, like there there could have been a Bang Baby situation somewhere other than Central City, Crazy. and maybe we see Static Shock. I don't know. Well, we could say. <laughs> We could say the metagene's there. It's like different yeah. things. Different things can set it off, you know. Yeah, I'm just I'm so over them, always constantly making mistakes and having to clean up their mess. It's like, well, if you didn't make a mess, we wouldn't have a season, I guess. And it's season five. Shouldn't they be learning by now? Uh, yeah. This I still love the Flash and do, but it, it, it's it's getting to the point where it's like, okay, season three was like, oh, that Avatar storyline, I freaking hated it. Season four with DeVoe started off strong, and then it just yeah turned into Smallville season three, aka a cluster frack. Um, it ju- it just, I mean, Cicada's not. Oh, well, you're right. Well, Cicada's a terrible villain. It's just like it, it, he just doesn't seem that dangerous. That the, the whole team couldn't take him out. Right like, off, shoot him! I was stabbed him. Where's Joe to shoot him? <laughs> or it's like, you know, Killer Frost is effective against him. Why can't she throw him in a giant block of ice or something? Or it's like, remember when Cisco teleported that stupid uh, lightning dagger in the orbit? 
It's like Earth fifteen, a dead Earth. Yes, put it on another Earth. Now, if he can get it back from another Earth, we got some serious problems. Exactly. We better better call Doomsday or something. But at least try it. I don't know. Like it's just obvious. Plot point is can you know Mm -hmm. convenient plot point is convenient because we have twenty two episodes to tell. And where's Ralph in the last couple episodes? Starting his detective agency for the spinoff, don't you know? Ooh. No, I'm kidding. Well, it's like when Cisco disappears. When, when, well, we all know why Joe disappeared, but he's back. Yeah, I was going to say, nice. Joe's back, yeah. That was me. Because I was just like, Cecile can't be just hanging around without freaking Joe. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's weird. Like, we don't know you like that. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, jo- Joe and the baby went on vacation and just left her behind. <laughs> Like, not worried about you, wifey. You'll be fine. <laughs> well, that's their excuse. There, they're like, "Oh, yeah, we don't have to mention the baby for a couple of episodes." <laughs> yeah, see that—that's the whole thing. I—I I really hate babies on superhero shows. That's why I was so against Lila and Diggle getting married and having a baby. Yeah, but I wonder if something's going to happen to that baby because, as we was it this week on Arrow. Uh, <laughs> We we uh, we see that uh, Connor Hawk in the future said Dick was his adopted father because and then we um, found out who his real father was. Spoilers, Bronze Tiger. Which I'm all for, but I was just like I could go for a little bit more comic book accuracy, but whatever. So does something happen to John Junior and then the Bronze Tiger get killed oh, and Dick and Lila adopt the kid? Here's the thing: when we see Star City 2046, it was it was possible that Sarah and John Diggle were, you know, two separate entities. They just had another child. Mm-hmm. Now, when we come to this reality, there's already a Don- John Diggle Jr. Mm-hmm. So he gets another son in some kind of way. Well, well did, the way that I saw it. Is it a flashpoint ripple effect, though, too? I think so, though. Yeah. Which, you know, you, well, know, you can say uh, anything's a flashpoint ripple. Well, and the, the timeline's been altered several times since then. Also, Earth so. one? Like, like I said, the fact that Oliver ends up with Felicity is something so something seriously wrong with Earth One because of what Thawne has done set in motion. That's well, my that's my grand Arrowverse theory. Yeah, everyone yells at every. Also, I was thinking was it today or yesterday. Yeah, everyone yells at Barry for doing Flashpoint, but Thawne's Thawne's he the started, original. Yeah, yeah. There's a ten year gap of things that should have happened in a different way. So should have called him. What are we going to call him, Doctor Manhattan? Though. Basically, so mm-hmm. he doesn't have, you know, and big, uh, big blue swinging. Yeah, and, uh, and we're talking about, you know, twenty forty six is all different now and stuff. Well, how many times in that one episode did Nora change the timeline? Fifty two times. times. That cup was not just cracked; it disintegrated. There was nothing to put back together after fifty two times, as far as I'm concerned. That is a ridiculous. Donkulous amount of she damage. smashed that cup on the ground. She stomped on it. She peed on it. I mean, it. Thanos smacked his finger on it. <laughs> That's oh, how bad we messed up the timeline. Thanos came along. You're not allowed to make that joke till you watch that movie. I can make that joke. It's in the popular culture, Zeitgeist. I can make that joke if I want. I'm hip, kids. <laughs> I I got YouTube. I know how to watch end credit scenes and whatnot. <laughs> I watched the whole movie. Boo. I will on whatever day, day before, whatever day it comes out. <laughs> anyway, join us in the Church of Esser. No, never. My arch nemesis. No, oh, I am gonna, I'm gonna rebuild the House of DC because they are slowly burning it to the ground. Controlled little burns, mm-hmm. and it will rise up higher and better and grander. That old shiny popcorn flick MCU crap that y'all got going on over there. I just need to get my unpopular opinion out of my mouth. Yeah, that that's fine. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> Alright. Are we done? Yeah. All right. It's bad. Hopefully it'll get better by the end of the season. Alright, everyone. So, next week we'll get another uh, episode of Gotham since that'll be back. And then, so we'll probably be back. Show? That Batman show, Lilith. Okay, Rob Southgate. Okay, Danielle. Okay, Rob. <laughs> Come on. Gotham. <laughs> he tries to say it all night. <laughs> and then we'll probably be back with Arrowverse for a couple weeks after that because after next week, uh, we're on another break. Till the, like the end, like April eighteenth is uh, 
April 18th and April 25th are the last two episodes of Gotham. Damn it, Gotham. <laughs> if they love their breaks. They had to take one more. So they had to stretch it out is what they had to do. So as, I've been, crazy? So, so as I've been saying from the beginning, Gotham may uh, desert you, but we will not. I mean, if you, if you got a hankering for some more No Man's Land, we got like a 17-part, you know, situation if you just scroll a little further down. Oh, capers. Like I said, if it's, uh, on the podcast every Monday, it's either going to be Gotham or Arrowverse, and when those are done, we're going to be doing Angel Season 2 like we did a Season 1 last summer. Summer. The summer! The of, summer! Of capes. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. All right. Let's get out of here. Little Hellfire. Where can people fight with you on the uh, internet? Uh, if you nerds disagree with my actual factual statements, you can um, fight me at Lil Hellfire on Twitter, at Lil Hellfire 88 over on the gram. But if you want to talk like Smallville, Superman, happy superhero stuff, you can find me at Save Me Pod on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and or Twitter. Fight me, nerd. And if you would like me to confront Little Hellfire face to face with your thoughts, email them capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Uh, follow us, Legends of the Arrowverse, on Facebook, on Twitter. Find us at LO Arrowverse and at CL Sidekicks. Follow CL Sidekicks on Instagram and the voicemail. You could tell Little Hellfire in your own voice, in your own words, if she's wrong. 614 382 2737. That's 614. 38 capes. Lilla said nothing wrong. Hashtag it. <laughs> Wonder how I can cut that up. <laughs> Lil, <laughs> she'll be like, I am always wrong. <laughs> Thank you again for joining us for Legends of the Arrowverse. Like I said, we should be back with one of these episodes in two weeks. Next week, more Gotham. <laughs> Well, paranoid now, little Hellfire. So, yes, join us next time. Don't fail this city or this podcast. Come back to the universe. <laughs> the Supergirl the catch train. No, she doesn't. Hashtag feminism. <laughs> No. Oh no, that's less that one. No. Whatever. Come back next time. Or it'll be crazy. <laughs>